Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, any aldermen who are here on the committee, could you come and join us, please? But we're going to get started because we do have a quorum. So welcome to the Planning and Development Committee meeting. It's Monday, March 23rd, 2013, 2015, sorry. And it is about 7.22 in the evening. Um, the first item on the agenda is approval of regular meeting minutes of March 9th, 2015. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. Are there any changes or corrections? Okay, then uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll move on to items for consideration. First is P1, Ordinance 36015, granting a special use for a convenience store and accessory type two restaurant, Adval Suite at 900 Chicago Avenue. The the Zoning Board of Appeals and City Staff recommend adoption of Ordinance 36015, granting a special use permit for a convenience store and accessory type two restaurant, Advel Suite, in the C1A Commercial Mixed Use District. The applicant has complied with all zoning requirements and meets all of the standards for a special use in this district. It's for introduction. Move approval. Second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Wynn, do you? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. P2 is Ordinance 37015, granting a special use for a Type 2 restaurant, Epic Burger, at 1622 Sherman Avenue. The Zoning Board of Appeals and City Staff recommend adoption of Ordinance 37015, granting a special use permit for a Type 2 restaurant, Epic Burger, in the D3 Downtown Core Development District. The applicant has complied with all zoning requirements and meets all of the standards for a special use for this district. It's also for introduction. Is there a motion? Move approval. Okay, um, I just have one uh, question on this, is the, um, hi, yeah, um, could you explain to me um, how the fumes are going to be, the, how the exhaust system is going to work? Sure. There's been some concern about from residents in that building. Yeah, we, we have spent uh, a lot of time and money with our mechanical engineer to ensure that we get the exhausting right from the, from the get-go. So um, working with the building engineer, they have a plan to exhaust up through the roof, which the venting would go up through an existing stairwell within the building. Um, we did have some questions from... I'm sorry, enclosed in a pipe that goes up yes. the stairwell? Okay. Yes, yes. Um, we did have uh, some questions from the residential building engineer, and we've addressed his questions to ensure that the venting is away from the building. Uh, it's a very similar build to uh, some of the other uh, buildings that we have uh, built in, and we're using the same team and have always exhausted in a way that the residents, as well as the businesses that uh, are in the building with us, have been happy with. So we, uh, we think we've got a good plan and team to get that done. Great, thank you. Alderman Rainey? Um, just a comment. I thought it was interesting that the um, prior applicant for this location was a protein bar that didn't make it, and now we have a healthy burger and fries place coming in. How, how is your burger and fries a healthy alternative to other food? Is well, it, well they, so, you know, our, for people that want a burger and fry, we think ours is as healthy as it can be. So, I see. Okay. Uh, the, it was founded by a classically trained chef, and from the, the start, he designed the concept around sourcing food the right way. It's all natural, never been frozen, no antibiotics, no chemicals, mm. deal only with humanely raised uh, suppliers. So it, it's, it's as healthful a twist as you can get on burger and fries. Excellent. Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, is Epic Burger the one out at Old Orchard? Yes. It is. So you know you joined quite a few burger establishments in Evanston between Edzo's and DMK and Five Guys, not to mention all the restaurants that are also known for their burgers in Evanston. It's, it's quite a crowded field, but maybe it makes Evanston kind of the burger capital. Well, you know, we've looked at this pretty closely. So I've, yeah. I've watched the evolution of, of downtown Evanston over the last 20 years and have studied the, the restaurant side of it pretty closely over the last six. It's actually number one on our target list. And we do think that, one, we're a little differentiated, but with burgers being the number one food category and it, it, it's a growth category, uh, that there is room for many of them to be successful. Great. Well, we welcome you to Evanston. It's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments? Then all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. 
Um, P3 is Ordinance 22015, Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment for Fences and Invisible Pet Fences. The Plan Commission and staff recommend approval of the Zoning Ordinance Text Amendment to modify Section 6-4-6-7, Special Regulations Applicable to Fences, and Section 6-18-3, Definitions Regarding zoning, zoning Regulations for Invisible Pet Fences. It's for introduction. Is there a motion? Moved to introduce. Is there a second? Alderman Rennie? Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Munzer, did you let's let Mark yeah. speak? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Mark Munzer, Director of Community Development. Um, two briefly, two separate items here. Um, the first one regards um, people who want to put up fences on corner lots and the 15-foot uh, setback restriction that is currently in place. What is effectively happening is that that is making their rear yards unusable because they're on a corner lot. You're effectively bisecting their you know rear yard, even though we consider it a corner side yard, and not really making it usable. So over the last two years, I believe we've had over 30 or 35 variation requests to seek relief from this requirement, all of which have been approved. So typically when we start to see things like that on an administrative review level, then it's time to, to codify it and, and, and make that proposal to all of you. So this would require fences on corner lots to be set back just two feet, uh, and landscaping would be uh, in front of the fencing to you know, mitigate some of the aesthetic effect. Um, they could be, you know, of course, no taller than six feet. And where there is a driveway to address potential um, safety concerns, there would be a site triangle required where the fence it would jut out about it would jut out eight feet, and the fence could only be four feet in that site triangle. So the thought would be that if you were exiting your driveway, that you would have sight lines to avoid any uh, potential conflicts with pedestrians. So that's the the, the first part. The second um, for the invisible pent fences was a an aldermanic reference to address some concerns about um, the fact that inv invisible pet fences are not um, currently regulated. They don't require a permit. Um, you, uh, as of now, can just can put them in. Um, there was a concern that they were being put directly, typically on the front property line, um, with no setback. And that apparently there were a few altercations with pets, uh, particularly dogs, being walked along the sidewalk and, and being attacked, essentially, because there was no setback and there was, you know, there was no uh, area of the yard that would allow for um, no interaction between the animals. So what we're proposing is that there be a six-foot setback, and that would be from any public right-of-way. So on your side yards, you'd still the, the invisible pet fence could still go up to um, right to the property line. And the idea there is that your neighbors, you know, are probably going to know that you have a dog, and then they can take the necessary precautions if needed. Um, but if I'm walking my dog along the sidewalk, I might not uh, be aware that your dog is aggressive. So we felt that six feet um, was an appropriate distance for. Um, for this type of fence. We did do a lot of research, and frankly, it were, we're kind of on the front edge of this. Not a lot of communities regulate it, but we wanted to bring it up for your review. Thank you. Alderman Tendum. Thank you. The uh, incidents that uh, Mr. Munzer referred to have been in the sixth ward, I believe, primarily. And um, there, it's true. They, uh, Invisible Fence Company and others have installed these fences right to the sidewalk. And there were a couple uh, dogs that were attacked last year. And um, there aren't that many dogs that have actually done this, but uh, the potential is pretty, is pretty strong. Um, there's no reason really that I can see to have something that goes right to the sidewalk. Um, and, and I think this will be a, um, can be observed and uh, not really uh, compromise anybody's ability to let their dog roam. Um, Mark, is there, um, is there any sort of signage that's in place um, notifying passers-by that there's a invisible fence there? There was discussion about requiring signage, but that is not part of this ordinance. It certainly could be added. Okay. Alderman Rainey? Um, I wanted to comment on the side yard fences. I have, uh, this is especially um, uh, good for my ward. I have a couple of blocks where specifically a fence was applied for this year. And it's a two block stretch where there are only two houses 
that have front yards facing the street. Everybody else has a side yard facing the street. And so there's just no way a person could have had a fence. So this, this is excellent. On the subject of um, the electronic fence, I, I thought they were very bad for pets. They are. Arden Fisk, aren't they? Why don't we yeah. just outlaw them? I mean, they, they're dangerous. They're, the, the problem that I see with them is we that- have, We have a dog in common. <laughs> That, we have a dog that defeated yes, <laughs> the yes your godmother to my dog absolutely um, yeah the problem that I see with them is that they're they're a shock system so they're they're actually electronic fence if your dog is highly motivated either to get to another dog or chase a squirrel or run into the street or whatever it is it's going to go out but very it's going to be very reluctant to come back It'll accept the first shock to leave, but not a second shock to come home. So I, I'm hoping that if we pass this, that we will be um, handing out literature to, um, to people who are applying for these types of fences so that they understand that this is not, this is not a security against their dog actually getting out of their yard. I mean, it doesn't replace an actual fence, and it doesn't replace a, um, your dog being under any kind of control or restraint. So right, it's, when it's you, a problem. When you put one of, when you install one of these devices, um, there's no physical thing that alerts your neighbor that you're no. doing this, right? right? So how are we going to know when somebody puts one up? I mean, why should they come get a permit if they can, you know? You know, this, it, that certainly is an issue. This would be a complaint-based sort of thing. If there was an issue, we could go out and we could say, oh, you have an invisible pet fence, you didn't get a permit, and then they'd be cited. How will you know that? We, we can't see it. Will you put on one of those? <laughs> I don't think that's in my job duties, but... Uh, <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a little city dog. <laughs> but how will we know? Seriously. Alderman Rainey, many times you do see a sign, and I think really? that's part of... I, I think that's part of... Um, the purchasing of it, yeah. Oh, it's and an advertisement. The, a little bit, yeah. and and also they they come with a 30-day um, return policy. So if it doesn't work on your dog, uh, they will come and take it out, and and you can what get your money it back. That's good. To know. It's a collar. Yeah. Well, it depends on yeah. like a neck your dog. Yeah. Shock system. It's just a shock yeah. collar. It gives the dog a shock, it and does. some dogs that does not deter them. Right. You know. Well, right. but Alderman Fiss said that it. The dog will take the first one, and but they may not come back home. But how do they get out? I mean, I they would accept a shock if they're highly motivated to get out. They will accept that first shock, but they're not going to accept a second shock to, to come, come home. back in. Oh, yeah. okay. Because the motivation to come back and get a second shock is not there. Well, so. some of the newer models now, uh, the dog continues to be shocked if he crosses the fence. <laughs> No. Um, but if he comes back into the yard, he's not. Or, or if he goes, yeah. you know, a mile down the road. Nobody told him that he would. The, the boy dogs no. are the, the girl dogs are smarter than the boy dogs. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't get it. It, it, you know, and, and as far as identifying, uh, part of the training is putting up these white flags. And they usually have the company's logo on it, so the dog is visually guided as to the boundaries of the fence. Well, the part dog. of the training too is increasing the level of electronic of shock that the dog gets. I, I, I'm with you, Alderman Rainey, on this. I, it's not something that I. Can I think support. some people, it, I, but we I should regulate it. it um, they eventually can turn the the shock off because the dog is trained. Well. Mm. <laughs> Okay, so what were, um, Alderman Grover? Question for Director Munzer about the, the fence provision, the um, setback provision. In the uh, request for the variance on our fence ordinance um, in the last couple of years, how many of those required or requested a six-foot fence? I don't have all? the exact number, yeah. but a large your sense is that a, a large that majority. And yeah. um, the nice thing about the the one thing I will <laughs> say about the variation process is it gives staff an opportunity to work with the property owner to say, you know, does it have to be six feet? Does it have to be a hundred percent opacity? Mm -hmm. um, so that's allowed us to do that. But in every single case, they're approved in some six feet. fashion, right, right? I mean, because I it's, it's just it's not workable for them to comply with a 15-foot setback. Right. I'd like to see, suppose, fewer high fences and fences that let a little air and light through. 
It's a little more neighborly. But what's the setback again for the? For the uh, invisible fence, what did you say? Six feet. Six? Six feet from a public right of way. That's what I thought. Oh, so if you feet. have a, a small yard. This is for, this is for the um, electronic fence. Electronic. Right. No, my, my question is about the, uh, the first the part. Fence. Fence. The corner lot fence setback is Side 15 yard. feet. Yes. Side yard. I, yeah. And then As the invisible is. pet fence is six feet as proposed from a public right of way. And all I'm saying is that six feet is you know six feet and and if you have a small yard what what happens with pet owners that don't have that much space but would like to use that I, i'm then they go uh, to the you... first provision of tonight's fence ordinance and they just build a real fence right that's actually creates a larger yard if they have a side yard mm -hmm. well yeah but they may, the yard may not i'm yeah. looking at size i mean everyone doesn't have a big yard mm -hmm. and a small you know yeah Footprint is small. Okay. I don't have a dog, so. Okay, was there anyone else? Any other comments? Okay, so um, both of these are for introduction. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we're moving on to um, the Plan Commission and staff recommend adoption of Ordinance 20015 and 25015. Uh, which amend the map and text of the zoning ordinance to establish a new Dempster Main Overlay District. The Overlay District would allow office and financial institution uses as a special use on the ground floors. The proposed Overlay District will foster enhancement and preservation of two of the city's oldest shopping areas for primarily neighborhood-oriented commercial and retail uses. It's um, P4-1 and P4-2. Mr. Munzer, do you want to walk us through that? Certainly, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, this uh, came from um, some interest from the business associations on Main Street and Dempster Street to address what they felt was um, a proliferation of uses, office and financial institution uses that typically do not promote uh, a large amount of pedestrian activity along those streets. Um, these neighborhood business districts are uh, primarily meant to support the neighborhood, typically through traditional retail and commercial and there was a concern that if, if the streets predominantly became professional services or financial institutions uh, or offices that they would not have the pedestrian character um, that this, uh, these business associations uh, would advocate for. So we took a look at it and um, offices and financial institutions would still be permitted on the second floor by right. Uh, and then on the first floor would be by special use. And that's the only thing each of these overlay districts would do. You know, typically overlay districts are pretty complicated um, zoning overlays, but this one is, for now, uh, pretty straightforward. It just delineates between uh, ground floor and second floor permitted versus special use in Dempster and Maine. Okay, these are for introduction. Is there a motion to introduce? Is there a motion to introduce? Okay, uh, Alderman Rainey. I, I just wanted to say I thought this was an excellent solution to a problem of a dead street or street that seems to be getting more and more occupied by non-pedestrian users. Excellent. And a lot less controversial than trying to make nail salons and beauty parlors <laughs> uh, a special use. For some reason, I don't know why. Well, I will throw out my historical tidbit for the night and remind you all about um, the old State National Bank building that was a landmark in downtown for so long where the bank was on the second floor and Walgreens was on the ground floor and how well that worked. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Was it Walgreens? But it was Walgreens it was. Mm -hmm. on the ground floor. So Walgreens brought folks in and they went up uh, upstairs into the bank. It was beautiful. Um, so all of those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Okay, great. Um, are there any items for discussion tonight? No, there are not. Uh, any communications? No. Okay, then we're all done. Is there a motion to adjourn? Did we okay. do Did we do P42 also? Yes, yes, we did both of them. Both? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, it's uh, 20 to 8 now. City Council will begin in 10 minutes, which will be well, 8 o'clock. You wanted to take 20 minutes? I don't know. I think a lot of people. Let's do okay. 10 minutes. Let's do 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes, it'll be 7.50 p.m. City Council will begin.